so I'm going to take you through uh, a quick intro to uh, Albert Camus' philosophy of absurdism, um, which can be kind of a tricky thing to get your head around. So hopefully this helps somewhat um, as we begin reading The Stranger. Um, so I just want to go back, um, actually, before Camus was even born um, and talk about uh, Soren Kierkegaard and Friedrich Nietzsche, um, because I really think that those two uh, philosophers are very important to understanding um, where Camus was going with absurdism. So um, basically, uh, these are uh, people who are coming out of um, you know, Central Europe in the mid 19th century uh, and sort of looking around and um, you know, figuring out what's the best way to think about life. So Kierkegaard has this very famous line where he says, anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. And what that means is basically, um, you know, having freedom uh, can affect our brains and our souls to the point where um, we are basically paralyzed with anxiety, right? We can choose to do anything we want. We can choose to do nothing. Um, and that knowledge itself can be terrifying. OK, so if you consider, you know, this is this is Kierkegaard's really famous example of this um, is if you're standing on the edge of a cliff and looking over the edge, um, you actually will be experiencing two different kinds of fear simultaneously. You're going to be afraid of falling, um, obviously, because falling off of a cliff would be a very dangerous thing, um, most likely kill you. Um, but you also are afraid of the fact that the power to jump or not jump is solely in your hands. You have the freedom to jump. You have the freedom not to jump. Um, and that in and of itself is terrifying. That control that you have can be very, very scary. Um, and that is sort of Kierkegaard in a nutshell, at least for the purposes of this lesson. There's a lot more to him, um, but this is all we really need to, to worry about right now. Okay, so Kierkegaard is all about, we have all these choices, we can always decide what we want to do, we've got free will, and having that free will um, is the scariest thing of all, realizing that you have the free will, I guess, is the scariest thing of all. Okay. There's another uh, philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, um, he's probably somebody you've heard of, um, his big famous quote is, God is dead, which is um, kind of a little simplistic, I think, um, but... Nietzsche basically um, he's using the word God to mean like received wisdom, morals, and ethical codes um, from you know the past two thousand years of Christianity or you know three thousand years or of Judeo-Christian philosophy or whatever. Um, so basically, what it's saying is that if you have a moral code or religious code that assigns all um, importance or significance to the afterlife, like be good now so you can go to heaven. If you're bad now, you will go to hell. Then we're sort of, we're not living, according to Nietzsche, because we're not living for ourselves and we're not living for the, you know, just the ability to be human um, because we're putting all of our stock in this thing in the future that we don't even know if it's actually going to happen. So when Nietzsche says God is dead, he really means like tradition and especially Christian teaching is dead. Um, it needs to be, you know, destroyed, at least, again, according to Nietzsche, it needs to be destroyed, um, and it's time to build up something new. Okay. That's where we're going to get into Camus. So Camus comes along um, in the early part of the 20th century. Um, he, you know, he's, his dad was a World War I, uh, soldier in World War I who got killed. Um, Camus becomes an adult, like, right around the time when World War II is starting. Um, Camus, um, and you'll investigate this a little bit more on your own, but he grows up very, very poor in French colonized Algeria um, and never really fits in um, with the uh, French colonists nor the um, Algerian colonized. Um, he winds up in France um, and becomes an academic <clears throat> and, um, you know, is there in France as the Nazis are rolling in. So it's a very, he, you know, he kind of lives his life in these very dangerous situations um, you know, these, these places where life is, you know, very tenuous. Um, Camus says that um, most of what we do actually appears to be meaningful to us, okay? But it's not actually meaningful. It just seems meaningful. 
um, because as conscious sentient beings with moral codes, we just kind of have to um, act as though we have meaningful lives, okay? Um, on the other hand, the universe, which is not a sentient being, the universe is just, you know, a big pile of physics, um, does not have any meaning to it. It does not, the universe does not care whether we as individuals live or die. It does not care about our civilization rising or falling. Um, it doesn't care if we're good to each other or bad to each other. It's just, um, you know, photons and stuff, right? So we as human beings are sort of programmed or um, wired to find meaning in everything we do and everything that happens, but the universe itself has no meaning to it. Um, so that right there is the fundamental tenet of absurdity, okay? The philosophy of absurdity. We find meaning and purpose everywhere and in everything, even though we intellectually know there is no meaning or purpose outside of what we ascribe to it in our own minds, okay? And keeping those two ideas in our heads simultaneously gives us the condition of the absurd. Once again, the universe has no intrinsic fundamental meaning, Okay, and it gives us no intrinsic fundamental meaning, and we know that intellectually, according to Camus, emotionally and spiritually, we want to find meaning in everything because it gives us a reason to live. Okay. Um, Camus also says um, that, you know, that that his philosophical quest basically uh, is to explain why people should not commit suicide, um, and a lot of that has to do with finding the joy in the absurd. Okay, so he's not somebody who is trying to depress us. He's not somebody who's trying to like tear down old orders. He is somebody who is trying to encourage us to go about and find joy, even when it seems like we can't. Again, remember, this is a guy who's a French intellectual academic type working at a university when the Nazis roll into France in World War II and established the Vichy government. He saw his friends get arrested. He knew that um, people were being executed. He actually, um, Camus actually spent some time um, working with the French resistance. Um, he published a lot of, he published a magazine um, called Combat that, uh, that, that ran a lot of um, you know, editorials and um, <clears throat> manifestos and stuff from the French underground. Like he was really deeply involved in the fight against Nazism and fascism. Um, but also realized that it was probably going to be a hopeless case because of just how quickly um, the Nazis were able to like do blitzkrieg throughout Europe. So he, you know, he's really developing this at that same time. So you sort of understand why his outlook is simultaneously bleak and optimistic. You know, what are you going to do against the Nazi war machine? But we have to keep fighting because we can't give up. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Once you, according to Camus, once you accept <clears throat> the absurdity of life, then you can really live. We have to find this purpose because not finding a purpose is unacceptable. Okay. If you can't find a purpose in life, then you're committing suicide, whether, whether you're actually committing suicide or you're committing some kind of philosophical suicide. So you have to revolt against the meaninglessness of the universe if you want to live and be human. Camus sees that struggle as um, the most important thing in life. Okay, That is life. Life is this rebellion against meaninglessness. And the more you struggle, the more noble your purpose is. Okay. Um, Camus wrote, um, in every act of rebellion, the rebel simultaneously experiences a feeling, of, a feeling of revulsion at the infringement of his rights and a complete and spontaneous loyalty to certain aspects of himself. It is in rebellion that you can fully express your humanity, in other words. It's in rebellion that your joy at being a, a, a complete human being will run up against the oppression that you're actually rebelling against. Um, and that conflict is beautiful. 
okay? He who dedicates himself to the duration of his life, to the house he builds, to the dignity of mankind, dedicates himself to the earth and reaps from it the harvest that sows its seed and sustains the world again and again, okay? So there, once again, we are going to find meaning in meaninglessness. If you think about like sort of the everyday drudgery of life, um, think of all your notifications on your phone, think of all the stupid homework assignments your teachers give you, um, think about the endless work. How many times a day do you have to walk your dog? Why do you have to keep cleaning up your room? What are you actually working for? It's that drudgery of life. But if you can dedicate yourself to finding the joy in that drudgery and in that routine and in that sort of inhuman, uh, inhumanity and meaninglessness, then you actually find purpose and your purpose is beautiful. That's Camus. Okay, that's his philosophy. That's why he's very he's a very modern philosopher. Okay. Right now, um, I would like you to grab your copy of The Stranger and read through the end of the first paragraph on page six. Okay. Take some notes on the setting. Okay. Think about the words that Camus uses to describe the setting of his novel. Okay. And I want you to see if you can connect those words and the way Camus uses them to this philosophy of absurdism. Are there words in there that are giving you hints that maybe we are in a situation of meaninglessness, um, that we are in a situation that needs to be rebelled against, and that we are in a situation where it ultimately doesn't matter? Okay. I'm going to leave you with this quote, the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. There are more activities um, on the website where you saw this. Please make sure you complete them. And uh, I'm really looking forward to reading The Stranger with you all. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one.